Uh, my name is Victor DeMarco. I live at uh, 11 Milburn Avenue. I'm also a part-time employee with the town of Hampton. Just for the general public to know, I uh, graduated from Bentley College of Accounting. Uh, I've had my own accounting service for 45 years. I still practice accounting and tax returns. Uh, I was also a police officer for 28 and a half years in the town of Hampton, and I've gone to the ranks up to captain. I only bring this up, I wanted it, because what I'm about to talk to might be helpful to know that I'm coming from two different angles. Uh, I happened to uh, tune into the selectmen in Florida with your streaming, which I like to do, and I tuned in uh, the night that the trustees of the trust fund were here and were discussing the trust fund, I guess. First of all, I felt there, uh, especially Mr. Silverdick, and I'll, that's the last name I'll use, he, being the chairman, uh, was very disrespectful to the board. Uh, I think the whole uh, committee was disrespectful. And then we find out uh, at that meeting <laughs> that they knew about something that they never conveyed to you. And that was a, a letter from the uh, SEC regarding the investment council they have retained. And for some reason, beyond my comprehension, that the, they, the chairman was notified by phone from the then a now current CEO, I guess you would call him, of McFanis. I think his name is uh, David Mays. Uh, that there had been a judgment or an reach settlement, I should say. So there was negotiations <coughs> to reach a settlement of a hundred thousand dollars or something that happened, and it was put off like it was no big deal. Um, he put in a set of figures and somehow it was interpreted by the SEC to be actual when he was meaning them to be uh, a, 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 an estimate on his part of what investments could yield. I am not uh, privileged to have seen that letter. Um, what we were sold the point that Oh, he's the best we have. You know, he's only charging us uh, 12 points, you know, to handle our money and we're saving a fortune. Most, most people would charge 30 or 40. Well, I'm sure you're all aware what points are, you know. And I'm, all, I'm sure you're all aware what a false leader is. You know, I, I do accounting for several firms. So if I say I'm doing the galley hatches books and, I, and someone at LeMay says, Oh, that isn't bad. <laughs> That's not what he's doing. So it opens the door for me. Now I understand it. It appears that they represent 29 towns in the state of New Hampshire. Now, how do you think they got to 29 towns? Nobody has 20 million dollars, mm -hmm. right? So I am sure somewhere down the line they looked at us with 20 million dollars and saying. If the town of Hampton has confidence in the investment of this individual, why shouldn't we? Okay? And I'm not putting the blame on anybody. But that was something that you should have all been notified of immediately upon notification that they were going to be looked at, not after they were looked at. So we're talking months before 2012. Okay? They would have reached some, some notification. And if you go into the negotiations, which I have with the Internal Revenue, it takes months to go back and forth and back and forth between lawyers. So then I looked at the meeting that the uh, Investment Council had after that notification to you. Certain things were said here. I think the attorney will tell you, and I'll tell you, the phrase, I don't recall, is one of the worst things that you could say in a courtroom, you know, it, it leaves the impression that you're not going to say what you might know or not know. 
but it leaves you an out by using those words. Uh, I taught the police department not to use those words in court. They, you, know, you just don't use those words. It leaves a sour taste in your mouth. Well, you guys all discussed it, and you seem to have laid it to rest. What bothered me a little bit, they said nobody talked to anybody. None of the uh, members of the committee communicated with each other once they were notified by the uh, Mark, uh, David, of what had transpired. The chairman didn't feel he should call a meeting, right? They didn't talk to anybody, but yet our chairman heard to the grapevine something of, like this was being taken place. So it wasn't held in confidence. Somehow it got out because the chairman said he knew about it the week they were here and didn't say anything to them because he thought they would probably bring it out, you mentioned. So obviously <coughs> it wasn't held in confidence and obviously there was some discussion with somebody regarding that. So right away we have a misrepresentation on their part to you that there was no discussion done with this at all. So let's, let's assume we want to believe that. The next meeting, at, they started at 4.15. We were told it was supposed to be on the uh, agenda. That he instructed <laughs> David Mays to put that on the agenda as number one. I've never heard of someone a, a preparing an agenda that's the investment counselor for the committee. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of strange to have him prepare a uh, minutes. Well, apparently he forgot. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Silverdick assured you that was the very first thing that was taken up. And it was. It was the very first thing that was taken up. And I want to read it to you. Chairman Silverdick said he wanted to discuss the issue of McKenson and company receiving a fine by the F SEC. He said these promotional activities had no bearing on the trustee's decision to select hit, uh, that company as their investment advisor. So there was no discussion about that. He just said he made a statement and that was it. He also suggested that a motion to reaffirm them, the company, as the trustee's investor advisor. And that's all that was said about it. The next thing, he made the motion. He suggested a motion be made, and then he made the motion to reaffirm them. Another member on the board, before that motion was passed, suggested that there be an amendment. That they include in that uh, motion that if he was, if they were to be audited again, basically, they were supposed to tell us, <laughs> and that's the motion that was passed. It was passed 4-0-0. Now, Mr. Falzone was not in attendance at that meeting, so I exclude him from everything I'm saying because he was excluded. And he, uh, he wasn't brought up the meeting afterwards to see what his opinion of it was. It was never discussed again. It was never brought up again, never discussed again. I haven't heard it uh, from the board being discussed again. You know. Now, I'll tell you from the law enforcement's point of view. If this was turned over to the Hampton Police Department to look into, we would have an investigation. A normal investigation. We're, thinking, we're talking about $20 million. And why is this person who for the last eight years, nine years, belittled the, the passport of three to the point where we all of a sudden went to five, and then all of a sudden he got elected after he was not elected twice. And his involvement seems <clears throat> too, too much involved. He sought after this in the worst way prior to it. I don't know if you recall it, Russell, you were here. Uh, I recall it distinctly. I don't think you would have recalled it, Mr. Chairman, but he would come up and talk against the board and they're not invested in it right. And I should do this and I should do this. And he kept on not getting elected. 
then finally, somehow, a decision was made to change the board to five, and we went to five, and he was one of the ones who got elected, and Mr. Silverdick and uh, a few other people were elected. Uh, I don't have very much faith in the chairman. When he was on the budget committee w with uh, myself, he referred to one of the selectmen as a lackey for the board of selectmen because he was asked a question and he gave his best answer. And I became very upset and wanted him sanctioned f for calling one of you a lackey, you know, in front of the board, in front of the budget committee, you know. So it did. His attitude too is wasn't very respectful for you to you. They have never mentioned it yet either in any of their minutes. One other thing I want to tell you that somewhere I don't have the exact notes, back <coughs> a couple of years ago, uh, the company advised our investment company uh, uh, investors that he mentioned us in a promotional matter. That he mentioned that he's now representing the town of Hampton. Which is not correct. You shouldn't never do that. They're not, they're not allowed to do it. One of the board members made mention of that and said, hey, you're not supposed to do that. We have confidentiality here. You're not supposed to go and tell people that you, you're representing the town of Hampton. And that was laid to rest. And this is well before any of this happened. Okay? So I think more has to be looked into than here. I appreciate the, the attorney's effort. They were not put under oath. Right? So those answers to me mean nothing to me. We have to bring this to an so end. So that's it. That's all I want to say. I think I would like, as a taxpayer of this town, that you look into it as further. And maybe, if necessary, uh, appoint an outside uh, person to do the investigation as to what involvement there is between the members and this firm. Thank you very much. No. And